BlackRock just out with its earnings, beating on both the top and the bottom lines for its latest quarter. Joining us right now is Larry Fink, BlackRock's chairman and CEO. Larry, it's great to see you. It's great to have you here. And, and looking through these numbers, you beat expectations by a long shot, $6.60 versus the $6.36 that the street was expecting. Revenue also beating. And in fact, revenue year over year up by 11 percent because of an increase uh, in higher base fees and then growth in technology services revenue, too. I think what surprised me the most, though, is the idea that you actually saw $35 billion in quarterly net inflows that came in during this awful quarter for the markets. Um, tell us a little bit about what's happening, what you're seeing. Well, first of all, welcome. Um, it's, it's nice to talk to you from home. This is our, my first time talking to all of you from home. Uh, it's a little <laughs> different for me. <laughs> so, um, Let me just start off and say, Becky, that um, it, it, it's been hard for everybody, obviously. Uh, BlackRock 16,000 employees really brought everything together. And if I reflect on the quarter beyond um, our in, in, inflows and outflows, uh, a few of our major components of our business really performed really well. Um, there's been so much talk over the years about ETFs. And on our show, on the show when I'm there, I'm always asked about ETFs and, uh, and do they represent risks? Well, let me just say, first and foremost, the ETF markets performed incredibly well, even in the most stressful weeks. Those who are looking for liquidity, those who are looking to move um, their beta exposures up or down were able to do that. Um, all the fixed income ETFs are, have performed quite well. There was never a period of time where, uh, where the imbalance between the underlying assets and the ETFs were really askewed. And most importantly, what we saw was we saw many first-time users of ETFs, whether it is to sell them uh, to reduce their exposure or to buy them to get exposure. So that's first and foremost. Two, um, in our quarter, uh, the Aladdin revenues were up uh, 34 percent from a year ago. But um, most importantly, um, we have 250 clients, including all of BlackRock. Uh, the Aladdin system worked fantastic. Uh, we did not design Aladdin uh, to be to having 90 plus percent of your employees to be working from uh, remotely, and then all our clients worldwide working remotely, and they perform it performed really well. And I probably received more compliments about the Aladdin system in the in the first quarter than any time, and maybe the cumulative time of of uh, BlackRock and Aladdin. And and yet, yes, you're right. The whole firm came together. Uh, with $35 billion of inflows. Um, and I'll, let me describe that. But before that, as you suggested, our revenues were up 11% from last year. Uh, operating income was up 3%. Um, and our margins really didn't move that much, down only 20 basis points. But let me really give you the underlying um, transformation of the, of, of the quarter uh, from something that was fabulous to something that was really uh, poor. Um, and I, I want to use the benchmark of February 21st um, to give you an idea what we saw. We saw on 20, on, on, uh, cumulatively from the beginning of the year to February 21st, we had about $82 billion of long-term inflows. We had actually outflows in cash in the first part of the, of the quarter. And then from February 21st, to the end of the quarter, we actually had $100 billion of outflows, mostly in index products where people are going, buying in and out, trying to getting their exposures, uh, whether it's index products or ETFs. And so it was a big reversal of market sediment, obviously. Uh, we actually were beginning one of the, the best first quarters in our history with $82 billion of inflows. Uh, by mid-February, and then obviously ended up where we were. So we saw big outflows in index products uh, in the last six weeks of the year, huge inflows in cash. And then since uh, the quarter end, we're, probably, we're seeing more um, inflows. <clears throat> probably one of the other highlights of our quarter, unlike the industry that had over $100 billion of active equity outflows, we actually had active equity inflows of $4 billion dollars. And so I think what the quarter shows me is the area where we emphasized 
iShares, uh, illiquid alternatives where we had seven billion dollars of inflows. Uh, we, we emphasized cash for the last few years with over fifty odd billion dollars of inflows. So between iShares, between our Aladdin platform up thirty four percent, the components worked and. Uh, and then I would also say, I think one of the biggest reasons why it worked, we have spoken to over 50,000 of our clients uh, since the pandemic really became our, the top priority. Between myself and a few other executives, we have had over 100 different um, individual virtual meetings with, our, with other CEOs, other CIOs, and governmental officials. So I think the the presence of BlackRock worldwide has really given us the opportunity to be working with our clients, helping our clients. And in some quarters, like this quarter, working with clients meant helping them reduce exposures. Uh, but overall, as I've been saying to you for many quarters, we're winning more share wallet. We're winning more share of mine with our clients.